In this video, I'm going to be talking about using the Sony FX6, FX3 and A7S III all together in one project for a video podcast. Here's the story. So the project is for the As One Leadership podcast, which is a podcast I've been doing over the last two years. Initially, when I started doing this podcast, I was using Panasonic cameras, varying between the GH4, the EVA One, and also the S1. And after switching over my gear to Sony, I've now landed on using my Sony FX6 and A7S III as two of the cameras. And for this particular project, I hired out the FX3 just to see how it lined up with the other two cameras. Normally when I do a multi-camera video shoot, I would like to use all the same cameras with the same lenses, with the same settings. You've heard this a hundred times before, it just makes sense. But for this project, I thought it'd be interesting to see how the image lines up because we've got three different cameras, but they're all fairly similar in the image quality that they can produce. And they've all got the same lens on them as well, which is the Sony 24 to 105 f4 lens. And they all have a Tiffin Black Pro Mist Filter 1/8 as well to try and keep the look to be as consistent as possible across all three cameras. I also did a custom white balance and I was recording in S Cinetone. I didn't want to try using S Log3 on this project, but in future projects, I'll probably try S Log3 and see how that turns out. Now, when you're producing video podcasts, one of the hardest things to do is to try to make it as sustainable as possible, especially when you've got multiple camera angles. In previous records, I would record on three different cameras or even two different cameras on some of the episodes. And I would then do an edit later, syncing them up in post and manually make the cuts that way. But for this project, I really wanted to simplify my workflow as much as possible. So I hired out a Shogun 7, which has a four input switcher built into it. Unfortunately, it's four SDI inputs. So with my cameras, my Sony FX6, that has an SDI out and that was fine. But for the A7S III and for the FX3, that only has HDMI out. So in order to get the FX3 and the A7S III to work with the Shogun 7, I needed to get a couple of adapters. So I hired out this decimator as well and ultimately it did the job. But initially when I first tried to get the FX3 and the A7S III to run into the Shogun 7 using the adapter, I wasn't having much luck. So I ended up contacting one of my friends that has used these converters before and he came to set and helped me do some troubleshooting. And long story short, he ended up figuring out that the reason that we couldn't get the signal to come from the A7S III and the FX3 through the converter and into the Shogun 7 was because one of the settings in the converter wasn't set up correctly. And the only way that he could figure out how to set it up correctly was through plugging the converter into his laptop and using the software that way. He did say that you should be able to change the settings on the converter itself by just pushing the buttons, but the button layout isn't really that great and using the software was an easier way to figure it out. So ultimately, that was the way he solved that problem and we were able to run the signal from the A7S III and the FX3 into the Shogun 7. So now we've got three inputs and now I'm able to do a live switch while I'm watching the record of the podcast, which saves a lot of time in post. What I really like about the Shogun 7 is that it records all the different ISO recordings. So each camera gives you a different recording and goes straight onto the SSD on the Shogun 7. And then it also does an XML file that you can open up in Final Cut Pro. And then you open that up in Final Cut Pro. And then if you've done any miss cuts or anything like that during your record, you can simply drag and change the cut in Final Cut Pro to get the right shot or the right duration of the shot that you're wanting it to be. This was really simple and really easy for me to just go through the episode and make sure that if I had any missed cuts, they were fixed up and it saved me a lot of editing time. So for my future video podcast, I'm definitely going to invest into the Shogun 7 just for this time saving feature alone. One thing to keep in mind though, is that this is a 1080p recording. Even though I am recording internally on the cameras to 4K, these are 1080 files that I'm getting on the Shogun 7. For me and my uses with this podcast and for other podcasts that I do, 1080 is plenty. I don't think people are going onto YouTube and looking for podcasts that are shot in 4K and if they're only shot in 1080, they won't watch it. So that's not really a limitation that's gonna affect me and my final video output. Moving on to the audio side of things, we're using two Shure SM7B microphones and we have a FET head attached to it. These microphones are notorious for being quiet and if you try to bump up the gain on your preamps or your recording mixer, unless you've got some really good preamps, then you're going to introduce a bit of hiss into the audio. Having this FET head or a cloud lifter 
boosts the signal and allows you to have a nice clean signal coming into your recorder. So that's one tip that I would always suggest to people that are using the SM7B microphones. And it's also an extra piece of equipment that you need to be aware of because if you buy these microphones and then plug them in and then turn the gain up really loud, you might start scratching your head thinking, why does everyone use these microphones because it doesn't sound that great. They don't sound that great because you need to have some sort of input signal booster like a fed head or a cloud lifter. With that said, I am recording with a Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 Mark II and these do have great preamps so I don't necessarily need to have the fed head on these microphones but it is nice to just have that there. I'm recording both channels and also a stereo mix and on the stereo mix I do have a plugin attached to that on the recorder and that's a paid plugin as well and it's called Mix Assist and this helps when you're recording multiple microphones for projects like a podcast or an interview or whatever that has multiple microphones and you only want one microphone to be live at a time. So if someone's talking to the microphone the other microphone isn't going into the stereo mix and bleeding into that mix as well, muddying up the audio. If people are talking and having a lively discussion, start talking over the top of one another, then both channels will be live at the same time. And you'll know if the channel is live because on the Mix Pre 3, you will see on the knobs, if it's highlighted green or lit up green, then that means it's going through to the stereo mix and it is being recorded. If the green light isn't on, then the audio isn't going through to the stereo mix, but you are still always recording that ISO record channel, which is really handy to have. If you wanna go into the mix later after you record, really dive in and then manually do things. But I have found that the Mix Assist plugin has given me great results for these projects. The lighting for this podcast is just a Godox SL60W and this is a fairly inexpensive light and isn't the quietest light but I have found that the audio has been fine on these podcasts. If for some reason in the future I'm recording this podcast and I can hear the fan noise from the Godox light, there is a plugin that I can purchase for my Mix Pre 3 and that's called Noise Assist. I haven't actually used it yet, I haven't purchased it yet, but from all accounts, I hear that it does do a great job. So that is definitely something that I might look at doing in the future, just in case I get a fan noise or something like that in the background that I don't really wanna to have to take out in post. I'm not the best with audio in post-production, and I find that whenever I'm doing noise removal, uh, it always makes the audio sound kind of weird and it just doesn't sound right. So if I can use the plugin to get it sounding correct on set, that would be a bonus for my future projects. And finally, for the wide shot, I was using the Sony A7S III on the iFootage Shark Slider Nano, and I just had the slider going backwards and forwards the whole time, just to give a little bit more interest in the shot, as opposed to having the wide shot just being a static wide. I have done a video on this recently and went into more detail about this slider, a couple of things that I did not mention was that the battery life is great on this slider. I was just using the Sony NPF batteries and for this whole shoot, which was about four hours or so, I just had the slider going backwards and forwards and the battery powered the slider the entire time and even had plenty of percentage left at the end of the shoot. So there was no worries with that. If for some reason you don't have any NPF batteries lying around, the slider, if you buy it in the kit, does come with one as well. But if you don't wanna use batteries, you can also plug the slider into the wall using USB-C or plug it into a power bank or something like that. And then that way you can have more power options that way to power the slider. I was also using the iFootage Komodo K5 fluid head on top of the slider to attach my A7S III to it. And the tripod legs that I was using was the iFootage Gazelle TC6 Carbon Fiber Edition. Overall, I was really happy with how this system worked out. The Shogun 7 really did fit into this workflow quite nicely, even though I did need to hire out a couple of converters as well to get my A7S III to work and also for the FX3 to work as well. In the future, I will be buying another camera to fill out my three camera setup because right now I've only got two cameras and currently I'm actually considering getting the A7 IV, which is a new camera that has just been released. And there are a few hidden misses with the camera, but one of the key reasons that I'm looking at getting the Sony a7 IV is because of one of the new features it has, which is lens breathing compensation. And for those of you that know all about Sony GM lenses, especially the prime lenses, they have a lot of focus breathing in them. And for this podcast, I was using a 24 to 105 f4 lens, but 
On my close-up shots, that was set to 50 millimeters. And if I could use the Sony 50 millimeter F 1.2 GM lens on this podcast on the A7 IV, then I could get a really shallow depth of field and it could look really nice, but it could also look really bad if I didn't have that lens breathing compensation on it. So having that feature on the A7 IV is really interesting to me. Hopefully that feature does come to the A7S 3 and the FX3 in a firmware upgrade, but so far I haven't heard anything confirmed about that. If you have heard any rumors or confirmation about this feature coming to other Sony cameras, please let me know in the comments as I'd love to hear that. And that's the video. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel for more videos on video creation in the future.